If you are suffering with knee pain and you've already been to see the doctor, they may have recommended that you either get a cortisone shot or a PRP injection. In fact, they may have even offered you both options and you're trying to decide which one is best for you. Today, we are going to unpack cortisone versus PRP for knee pain. Nearly 20 million Americans suffer with knee pain, and this can go on for a long period of time if the correct treatment is not administered. The choice of treatment can significantly impact your recovery. So in this video, we're going to delve into two of the most recommended choices for knee pain, cortisone injection versus PRP injection helping you to understand which may be best for your situation. Knee pain can be debilitating, and many people struggle with knowing what the right treatment option is for them that will provide them with the most relief and healing. First up, we're gonna discuss cortisone injections. The cortisone injections have been around way longer than the PRP. It delivers steroids directly to the affected area. The steroids can help to decrease inflammation either in the joint, in the tendons, or in the ligaments surrounding the knee joint. It can help deal with arthritis, tendonitis, and bursitis. Arthritis is inflammation in the joint. Tendonitis is inflammation in the tendon. And I bet you already guessed that bursitis is inflammation in the bursa. But what is the bursa? The bursa is a fluid-filled sac that helps to decrease the rubbing of the tendons on the bone. So you'll find them in those bony places in your body, which means you'll definitely find them in your knee. So the cortisone injection is a steroid. Cortisone is a steroid that's directly inserted via a needle into the affected tissue. They may go into the knee joint to deal with arthritis. They may go into the tendon to deal with the tendonitis or directly into the bursa if they feel that your pain is coming from a bursitis. And usually before they inject the big needle, they have a smaller one that provides a local anesthetic so it doesn't hurt too much when you actually get that big needle stuck in. Now, cortisone may take seven to 10 days to take full effect because the idea is that the cortisone decreases the inflammation. It doesn't do it all at once though. It's kind of like Pac-Man going along and eating you know, just the different dots, right? So it can take a while for it to take full effect, but usually doctors recommend seven to 10 days to see the full effect of your cortisone injection. Now, how long do the effects last? It can be from weeks to months. But the truth of the matter is, if you have dealt with the issue that caused the inflammation in the first place, the cortisone injection can last forever. It can help be the thing that bumps you over to decrease that inflammation and let all the other things you're doing, the therapy, the movement, the exercises, to really take effect. So I had a patient who had a cortisone injection directly to their knee because at the time, their primary pain was coming from the knee. Now, here's the thing. The knee pain had led their hip to not function correctly, and it was actually causing problems further up the chain. Now, luckily, we already knew this because we had already done the evaluation. So when the patient had the injection into the knee joint, it got rid of the knee pain, but it caused hip pain. And my patient was very discouraged because of course one thing was gone, but it just brought through another problem. So what I had to tell her is that pain inhibits pain. And so she was actually having the knee pain, but it was more than the hip pain she was having at that time. So the cortisone injection worked in that it eliminated the knee pain. However, then the hip pain was able to become more present or increased awareness of it on her part. This does not mean that the cortisone injection caused her hip pain, but it did cause her to be aware of her hip pain. And that's the benefit of working with a specialist before you have the injection, because they can help you navigate these things afterwards. So if you have some unusual symptoms that you weren't expecting, they can help you understand, is that was that symptom really to be expected based on your whole holistic history? Next up is the PRP injection or plasma rich protein. What the doctor is going to do for this one is they're actually going to draw some of your blood out. They're going to put it in a spinny machine called a centrifuge and they're going to take out all of the plasma from your blood. 
They're then going to take that plasma and directly inject it into the area or the tissue that is in lesion. So what does that do? Well, it provides the plasma or the healing cells directly to the tissue that is having a problem which is fantastic because then you actually get a bump on your body being able to heal itself. PRP injections are commonly used for things like arthritis, tendonitis, or ligament issues. And the great thing is, since it's your own blood, there's very limited side effects. The downside compared to the cortisone injection is that it does potentially take longer to see the effects. You see, the cortisone is actually going in and decreasing the inflammation. That is what cortisone does. The PRP is to boost your body cells and their ability to heal, which means it can take a couple of months to actually see the full benefits of the injection. But the great thing is, is that injecting your own blood in there actually leads to complete healing of the tissue, which means this problem may never come back again. So I have an opposite story of a PRP injection this time from my cortisone injection earlier. So you remember earlier I talked about my patient who had a cortisone injection in their knee and started having hip pain. Well, this time I'm going to talk about a patient who actually had a tear in her labrum up in her hip that she had a PRP injection to. Now, the PRP injection took a while to be able to heal the labrum in the hip, but she was actually scheduled for a total knee replacement because the hip problem had actually caused so much knee pain and the doctor saw arthritis on the x-ray and thought that the knee needed to be replaced in order to eliminate the pain. I thought that the problem was coming from the hip and the fact that she couldn't move correctly, which was putting abnormal stress on the knee, which was aggravating the arthritis that was already there. As it turns out, I was right, because when the patient had a PRP injection and that hip labrum healed, she was actually able to move correctly, which decreased stress on the knee. She was even able to get back to exercises that she enjoyed doing, like biking and walking and swimming, which of course, all of those activities are fantastic in keeping your knee joint happy and healthy. So here's the thing. A cortisone injection or a PRP injection can be a helpful part of your healing process. However, you need to be working with a specialist who can get to the root cause of your problem and get your body moving correctly, no matter if you have a cortisone injection or a PRP injection. Now, many people ask me which one I prefer, and I will say that I definitely prefer the PRP injection in general. The reason why is it's using your own blood cells, your own plasma, in order to be able to help your body heal. So it's very in line with the way I treat and my belief that every tissue in your body is designed to heal itself as long as it's moving correctly. Here is the caveat to that though. If you have a knee joint that is really, really swollen and really puffy and it makes it difficult to move because you're so swollen, the PRP injection may actually be aggravating to your knee joint. In this case, if you have a very swollen knee joint, it may be more helpful to get a cortisone injection because that will help to decrease the inflammation. When you decrease the inflammation, that's gonna allow you to have more normal movement, which is going to allow you to do the things you need to do in order to heal. So the truth of the matter is, it really depends on you and what's going on with your body. But a general guideline, I prefer the PRP in general more than the cortisone because the cortisone is a medication. However, medications have their time and place. And if you have a really swollen knee joint, the cortisone injection is going to be better to help to decrease that swelling. Now, I would love for you to drop your comments below, specifically if you have had a cortisone injection or if you have had a PRP injection. If you would drop a comment, let us know which one you had, why you decided to have it in the first place, and how it worked for you. That would help other people who are trying to make a decision between a cortisone injection and a PRP injection.